regards, I would like to ask uh, John Parker to lead us in the pledge and uh, former Mayor Mel Madison pray for us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Father, we come before you this day and ask for your wisdom and guidance that we go about the business of the, our community. And Father, we pray that you will watch over our community, bless it, keep it safe from future harm, and whatever we may do, may it be pleasing to you. In Christ's name, amen. 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 We'll call the meeting to order. Welcome. Glad you all could get here. <coughs> And we will uh, open the meeting with the consent agenda, which consists of the regular meeting minutes of 2 4, workshop of 2 11. Motion to approve. Motion by Commissioner Ashworth to approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? I'll second. There's a second. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, I need, I need to read in a couple form. 8Bs. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, the first one being on Form 8B, a memorandum of voting conflict for county, municipal, and other local public officers. There's two of them here. Both of them are for Commissioner Ashbrook. One is for Ordinance 567, an application for a PUD. Uh, the reason is he has a relationship with the applicant. And the other one is on Ordinance 566, a large-scale plan amendment. And the same reason he has a conf conflict with the applicant. And these will be attached to the minutes. Thank you. They're, it's listed in the minutes, but I know you had to read them. So, uh, with that, uh, all in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Most passed 5 and 0. Uh, the building department, it's not quite time for that update. Uh, Long term recovery committee, I think Ms. Nancy Stewart's here to give us a little <coughs> update on what they've got going. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Um, not too much of an update other than to let you know that we are well prepared and permits have been pulled to do the first roofing project um, the first week in March thanks to the city for helping us complete those permits very efficiently and effectively we have a group uh, from Hosanna Industries coming down from Pennsylvania um, as full volunteers um, to help us work on that project the long-term recovery team is supplying the materials via a grant that we received and um, weather permitting we're going to get four done within the city limits Wonderful. so um, the second thing is we have a uh, warehouse uh, supply depot that's one of those aluminum frames with the uh, reinforced canvas top very much like you see on the way through Tyndall Parkway. Um, that was also received or purchased through monies through a grant that we have. It is ready for delivery. The Port Authority generously has given us a lease of a dollar a year for two years at one of the, the old chemical um, site um, at the Port Authority, and we're just awaiting permit approval from the city. So um, as soon as we get that, we can get that installed. It's ready to go. Um, it is fairly critical that we get that done in a timely manner because we have tools from a tool bank um, out of Panama City, um, which is a national organization that donates tools for projects, disasters just like this, um, that we need to go get and have staged for the volunteers here that first week in March. Um, the last thing I'll say is the organization, as all organizations do, go through uh, multitude of changes in terms of the board uh, of directors. And right now, we are seeking uh, people who are interested in sharing our grants and donations committee um, and our case management and unmet needs committee. So if you know of anyone or want to put that out from a city perspective of anyone who would like to be involved, we would very much appreciate some additional support in those roles. So, any questions? questions? When you say you're waiting on the permit from the city, is it with the building department? Yes, sir. I have to talk to Creel this morning okay, about it. Good. I think you called <laughs> Kelly this afternoon and uh, may have an update for you. Okay, yeah. I appreciate yeah, it. We're Thank working you. on that. Okay. 
Oh, Anything I else? know what uh, yeah. Time, uh, once the uh, building permit is issued, what's the length of time you think for construction of the, of the warehouse? It's ready to go, so they can have it here within two days and they put it up within a day. Wow, super. Yeah. Okay, good deal. Hope to see it in the next week. Then. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Any other questions? Anybody? Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, PSJRA, is there anything for that, Commissioner Ashbrook? No updates, sir. No updates on that. Okay, Mr. City Attorney. Yes, Mayor, we have just a, a few things on the agenda today. The first one is, and it's on page, starting on page seven, is a preliminary plat approval for a seven lot subdivision. The applicant is PSGJ LLC, and that was recommended to be approved by the zoning board. Is there a motion from the floor to uh, approve the uh, reserve on St. Joe Bay's plat? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to abstain from this vote. Uh, I've got a business relationship with the applicant. Okay. All right. Everybody familiar with the with the plat? It's seven seven large lots uh, run along the highway uh, next to St. Joe Bay. a motion to approve the uh, preliminary plan. So moved. Okay. Motion by Commissioner Hoffman. Second. Second by Commissioner Langston. Any discussion? Any discussion from the floor? Anyone? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passed 401 abstention. Okay, next item. Uh, the next item is um, reverting back to the tennis court lease, um, I did submit to Charles Costin, the school board attorney, a draft of this particular lease, the one that's attached to the agenda. Um, he didn't necessarily have any objections to it, and this is basically the balls in your court, whether you agree with the terms as they are, or if you want to make any changes, if you want to go forward with it at all. Okay. Comments, suggestions, or motions? I think we need to move forward with it. Uh, that's what we're, our plans are all along. We're, we've now uh, heard from the <coughs> school board or the superintendent, and I believe we have some lights going to be donated. In order to get funding from the TDC, we have to have it in our name. So I'll make a motion we approve the lease. Okay. <coughs> motion to approve the lease for the tennis courts from uh, Gulf County School Board. I'll second this one. Okay. Second. Discussion. I just, Mayor, I just want to be clear about uh, if, if this now belongs to the city, the liability falls on our shoulders. I just want to make sure that we're all aware of that. If someone gets injured now, that's on us. Am I right, Attorney? Uh, if, if it's a reason that we were, our negligence, I and mean, if it's just someone yeah. playing tennis, so you know, if there's it's a in, substantial if it's in, risk of being involved. If it's in good tennis. condition now, I'm all for this. If it doesn't take it, there's no. We, risk are, of we are taking the liability for what happens behind those chain link fence. Nothing else, nowhere else, just behind the chain link fence. That's the way I have it written here. Same liability we have with every park or every piece of property we sure. own. Correct. Yeah. You just have to add that one. Yeah. We are, and we are agreeing in this lease to add that particular part of the tennis court itself to our policy. I think it's yeah. a our great current thing. liability. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, motion and a second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passed five and other. <clears throat> Uh, the next thing on the agenda, there are next couple things. They're kind of the same, under the same area. The commissioner terms update and the commissioner qualifying fee petition process update. And I believe where we left that is we tabled that at the last meeting, and we weren't. I've just, if the board has any instructions for me, I'll move forward. If not, it can stay tabled. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, I'd say table it. Don't affect anything that's coming here. Um, yeah, we've got time to talk about yeah. it some more. I, everybody, I mean, majority of the folks I've talked to have been probably going to be against uh, up in the terms to four years or two, but uh, we can still be a vote of the, of the registered voters in the city. But uh, I, I'm not so sure it'll, it'll pass. But I don't want to have a special election just for it. If we yeah, add, it to, add it to one of the uh, elections we have, uh, 
regular election, then, then we could add that. It wouldn't cost any more. But yeah, on the, in the qualifying fee uh, section, which is basically under the same thing we've been talking about, uh, there's no hurry for that either because it would not affect this year's election. So I would tend to agree with Commissioner uh, Lowry on that. So everybody okay with this table? Gentlemen, okay. Uh, all righty. I have one last thing that I want to mention. At the last meeting, um, I was kind of directed to look into the waste pro transfer station out on Industrial Road. Um, I, I actually went out there and looked at it, and boy, it is a it's a dump. I mean, it's there's thousands, tons and tons and tons of just garbage. I don't know if any of those cans are really worth anything. They didn't really appear to be to me. But looking, I did. Jim furnished me a letter that was written on April 8, 2019 by the former city attorney, Adam Albritton, basically telling them exactly what I would put in the letter right now. So I, my opinion really is that the letter writing is over. We did withhold a substantial amount of money from the last payment. I believe we start using that money and start cleaning that place up. That's my, would be my recommendation. I don't believe me writing any more letters, all that's gonna do is waste time. And at the end of the process, if that's not enough money to clean it up, well, then we can discuss possibly some litigation against them to try and recoup some money. We can cross that bridge when we get to it. But at this particular juncture, I just think writing more letters is just a waste of time. But I look, I look for instruction from the board how they like to proceed. And it looks awful out there. Elaborate on that. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was the one that brought that up. Um, and. What, what, when was that letter? Letter sent was, out? was written April 8th, 2019. Coming up on almost a year ago. Yeah. And, and the reason why I brought this up is because <coughs> I spoke to our current provider um, uh, and he has <clears throat> made mention that he could use that property if we were in the event we could get that place cleaned up and we could, we could create some revenue there. So, um, I don't know. I, I, um, I think to waste three, three or four more months writing another letter that's not going to have anything happen. How much is in that pot that we would know? 40, 40. Do you think 40 would clean it up? I don't know. It's, a, it's, a, it's pretty bad. Jim, didn't we but get I think it's do a good portion of it. Didn't we get some insurance money yeah. on it? You also have some insurance money too. Uh, the place needs to be cleaned and also the uh, structure itself, you actually need to replace the, it needs to be rescanned. Yeah. We do have 135000 in insurance. FEMA has not finalized their calculation. The current estimate from FEMA is one thirty six, but but again, that, that's not final. Uh, so that would be 270000 if FEMA's number held for both those facilities there together. Could we go out for bids to see what it would cost to resurface or rescan the building and clean the place up? I don't think the city can do it. I say, give us, give us to the next meeting. We'll make my suggestion now that we've got clearance from our attorney. Let's let our staff look at as far as what we think we could possibly do to clean it up and, and to skin it out. Yes, you would definitely have to go out to bid for that. But let us, um, if you will, let's table this to the next meeting, if you will, and give us the time to go out there and look at it and get together with our staff to figure out what what we think we could possibly do because it is a mess. One, one thing that, that me and Mr. Tanell spoke about is, you know, if, if there was a way it could be designed where he could use it best use for him, um, you may want to include him in, in going out there and seeing, you know, what, what he might need. Uh, he, he mentioned some place to work on his trucks and such. So. Sounds good, yeah, because now that we've got clearance to move forward on it, now we need to get a plan as to what we can do to get that house. I, I, I lean toward uh, using the money to start cleaning it up. Uh, I, I, anybody want to send another letter? Okay. Let's I mean, work with that. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's work with We'll get us a plan together. Okay, okay. great, great. It's, it's sitting there as a revenue producer that not generating revenue. Losing out on it. Yep. And, it, and it's... Looks horrible. It does. What was it? What were they paying us? Two, wasn't it? Two thousand a month. Two thousand. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> That's all I have. Okie dokie.
Thank you, sir. Welcome to business, Mr. Jim. Yes, sir. The first item is the government complex grant. Uh, Mary, you want to give us an update of what we yeah, have? Yeah, we, we got great news this, this past weekend that uh, St. Joe Companies agreed to sell us uh, our, our first choice of property uh, for the amount of money that we were uh, given by the uh, DEO grant. Uh, we're currently waiting from hear from DEO that they'll let us use the entire amount on the purchase. Uh, and uh, if that's the case, uh, we'll, we move forward and, the, and it's the property I think I mentioned uh, past meetings. It's uh, the old ball field property right off of Langston Drive between uh, First Street and Avenue A. It's a great piece of property. It's centrally located. Uh, I, I think it'd be a good choice for us. It'll also help us go out for grants to uh, actually build, build a new government complex. It's uh, the main thing we have to do is uh, once we agree on the purchase, uh, we need to have it surveyed uh, before we uh, sign anything with the St. Joe folks. Uh, I think it says 15 days from the time uh, that we sign this, we have to have a survey. So we need to go ahead and survey it before we sign it and, and uh, go from there. So uh, that's where we are. The purchase amount is, is the amount that uh, we got from DEO, which is $312,500. So it's uh, I, based on the appraisal, it's, it's a very good price. Have we spent any of that money yet? No, sir. Okay. I did have a brief conversation with DEO before this meeting. I finally made contact with them. Uh, indications are that what would need to be done is you would have to have an amendment to that agreement on there but what they would like to see is a plan that we're going to continue on with this process the initial grant said that we would deliverable number one would be purchase a piece of property and number two to do some engineering work and do some architectural work would you realize that's not gonna be enough money to do all those things so we have to send that to them to get their approval so what I would suggest is if you're going to go ahead with the contract and move forward to make it contingent on approval from DEO and the survey would be for recommendation. We uh, also, Jim, we uh, got lost train of thought there for a minute. All right, $314,500 amount, I mean, it's a golden opportunity for us and, and we need to, uh, we need to buy that piece of property, irregardless of, of if we can't use it all, even though I think they will. I think we need to let them know that the Ferguson group, if we're going to give them a task order to go after some of that uh, $718 million CDBG to build it. So with all that in there, I think we'll be successful. But, but still, uh, you know, I appreciate St. Joe Company working with us. George Gonzalez has been very generous. and. Uh, working with us and uh, I don't we don't need to let this slip by I completely agree with you yeah. and Mary this asking price was about half the appraisal is that correct about yes yeah. Yeah, that's a great deal yeah so what did you say you want you want I, just I just I'd like to have a motion to, to, to purchase a property and and uh, we uh, we got to have a you know with a survey uh, attached to that, but purchase it for, for that amount of money. Uh, and rolling the dice that DEO is going to going to let us use all of it, which I think they will. I'm fine with rolling the dice on that yeah. piece, but the, what about the, the survey piece? You you want to wait on the survey? I, I think if we vote vote to to accept the the uh, purchase agreement, we need to go ahead with the survey. Yeah. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Motion and second to uh, approve the uh, contract with St. Joe Company for a purchase of property for a new city complex. And are uh, you including in the motion a survey right, within along, 15 days. before we sign the before we sign the agreement? Yes. We yes. need to have a survey in yes, our hand. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> to make sure because it it's a it's a big piece of property and well, I yeah, make it's, sure it's yeah. all it's kind like, of like it looks. Yes. Up front. Additional comment there. Oh, uh, okay. In section two, the second paragraph, just so we're all on the same page, it says, as initial consideration of conveyance of property from seller to buyer, the buyer hereby waives any and all claims, demands, or payments with respect to obligations of the seller to provide fire apparatus 
fire equipment or construction new facilities. This Commissioner Hoffman goes back to the two hundred thousand. I'm clear on that. Okay. I'll waive all okay. future arguments that they owe us the money. Gotcha. On a deal yeah. like it, this. It, it's uh <laughs> it, yeah, I thought it was I saw they snuck yeah, that they, in there. It, I it, mean you can look at it and kind of think, well they just paid us the it's money. It's still a so, good deal. I mean it's a good deal, so let's <laughs> move forward. <laughs> okay. Other other comments. Mr. Langes, any changes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, anybody from the audience? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign, motion passed five and other. <coughs> uh, the next item is my contract. My contract is up for consideration of renewal. <coughs> okay, I think everybody's got a, uh, a uh, folder from uh, city manager. His contract's up for another three, is it? Yeah. Three years. And uh, I'll open the floor for discussion of that. I've got a uh, suggestion, if, if now is the time, uh, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, I would like to discuss some uh, what I consider positive changes to the contract, and I would ask the support of the uh, other commissioners, uh, at least to okay. consider it. All right. Where is that? Um, I would like to start under uh, paragraph three on okay. the uh, annual base pay. Right. I did some studying in the last few days on cities rep, uh, pretty much the same size, some smaller. Mexico Beach just hired a city administrator at 90,000. Uh, we're somewhere around 3,400 people. They're just over 1,000. That's based on 2010 census. Um, not only is it 90,000, within uh, 12 months, they can increase that person's salary by 5,000. So I think it's fair to say they'll probably be at 95,000. Um, the city of St. Joe is fortunate to have someone that is from St. Joe, families from St. Joe, and is doing a, an amazing job for the city of St. Joe. I think if we don't consider raising the salary on this next three years, we're going to be in a position where we're not keeping up with the other cities and we'll be a training ground uh, a lot you can look at a lot of the state agencies they train people corrections law enforcement and then they move to other places i think now is the time to look at paying our city uh manager at a fair rate and, and also compensating him for the other items I just mentioned. So as far as paragraph three, I would like support of increasing the salary at 7%. That would take it at 96,323.97. I'd like to consider upping the uh, annual leave to from 120 to 160. The city of St. Joe is capped at 120 hours for all employees and once you reach a certain amount of uh, longevity you can't go up at all uh, if i'm here for another term i plan on looking at at the uh, personnel book and hoping that we can get support to carry that out a little further uh, i think you shouldn't be capped at 120. what's actually happening in the city is you have people that's been with the city for a long time, they're not only capped at 120, some of them are not even able to take off the 120 hours and, and you lose it. So, but, the, but as far as this position, I would ask support for uh, going above the 120 cap and going to 160 hours annual leave. The last item <clears throat> that I would ask you to consider would be on number seven, the last page. Uh, it, it would read, Anderson's employment may be terminated at the will of the city by a two-thirds vote, supermajority vote. In other words, it would take four people sitting up here to vote to terminate that contract. Currently, it's just a simple majority. Those are the items that I would like to uh, offer for change. Thank you, sir. Everybody understand 
what uh, changes <coughs> we'd like to make, and we need to uh, hear from others if you would like to speak on it. Mayor, I think um, I think that everything that Scott said is absolutely the truth, and I think that I can support this if we do due diligence this next budget season to try to figure out how to make a, a more livable wage for our city employees all the way down to the, <coughs> from the smallest level up. We are not competitive in this community, and it's not just city managers going and looking for jobs other places. It's your city crews that get better opportunities. Well, I, as well. I agree, 100 percent. Our police department's underpaid. Our city work, public works is underpaid. The water plant, everybody. Uh, you can't live in this town for what we're paying. Well, in order to do pay increases fairly and, and have sense about it, and to not find yourself in a retention area, is you have to start either at the very bottom and everyone goes up or you start at the very top and then you adjust as you come down it just so happens that today we're faced with a contract of the person at the top sure and he wouldn't be affected by the changes we would make in october because he's a contract right and as far as the budget i did check with mike our budget uh, expert and the money is available based on several positions in the city that are currently unfilled so we're, we're not spending that money. So I, I don't foresee the, uh, I think it was 6000 6, somewhere in there. I don't think that's going to affect the budget in a negative way. I think one thing we're probably, may want to consider next, next budget cycle is maybe a paying class study. That would help tremendously across the board in looking at all the, the, the salaries I think the league collects that data. I think they, they have that on your right. survey, Jim, every year. Yeah, so you can get that from the league. Great idea. I agree with the um, seven seven percent increase, but um, 120 hours of um, annual leave. I think we should try to um, adjust that at a, later, at a later time if we can do that. It's, I, w I would like to see um, all the employees change that. If we can change all the employees at um, at, at one time from that 120 to 160 but the um the the, the increase in, in pay per year annual pay per year I, I totally agree with that and i'm fine with that the uh the change to uh take the time to look at a, a fair way where it goes across the board that'd be fine yeah, yeah I, I think too that when you when you bump everybody across the board it it's i mean it leaves you with possibly some unfund, unfunded liability. So I would want to make sure that that was funded. Uh, but um, I'm fine with that if that's uh, the wishes. So, so what I'm hearing is, uh, is the, the salary increase and the uh, two thirds <coughs> super majority for termination. Uh, that anybody else have anything they'd like to add to that? Good. That's good. Do we need to... Uh, Does anybody ask the city manager if he wants to continue employment with us? <laughs> I think by him giving us this, he, okay. yeah, he, he presented it. Yeah, he did. But, uh, yes, yeah, sir. Actually, his proposal was four-fifths, not two-thirds. Was it? Yeah, was okay. Two-thirds, two -thirds. which would be, so, according, according to what I... So four out of five commissioners. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So uh, do we need to draw this up again or do we get the agreement of the city manager if it's okay with him? Yes, sir. Thank you for the uh, for the consideration here. I do love our little town. Uh, <clears throat> I do appreciate everything y'all done for me. Uh, yes, that would be tremendous. Thank you. Jim did a wonderful job leading us right after the storm as well as what he always done in the past, but that, that was really exemplary at, at what what you've done there and what you plan to do. So, so do we need to put this in a form of a motion? Yes, sir. Well, I'll, I'll make the motion okay. to uh, to increase the salary 7% and to change the determination uh, the clause to uh, two-thirds vote to five, which is Count of four, correct? And you, got, you accept the contract. 
Yes. With those changes. Yes. Okay. Second. Second for discussion. Second for discussion. I just have one question for our attorney. Can we supersede our voting policies by this contract? Because I think in our in our charter it says that everything requires a majority vote unless there are certain stipulations. There's only certain things that require a majority vote. Right? I think you can Super supersede majority. this particular employment contract. Okay. With this particular employer. Okay. All right. Any more discussion? Discussion from the audience. Yes, All sir. Of the question. Yes, yeah, sure. Come up. Yes, sir. Take your name and sign in. All right. Yeah, you already know my name. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, the only question concern that I have is budget will there be money in the budget to cover the increase I, i'm not objecting to the the increase but i'm concerned if that's going to cause taxes and other service increase to cover this here i think our financial guy you want to speak to yeah. that no, we, we didn't specifically budget the six thousand dollar increase for jim's salary that would be prorated for the, the amount of months left in this fiscal period uh, and we do have some five to six employees or vacant positions in the general fund that have not been filled for the first uh, three months of this fiscal year. So overall in the general fund, we have the, the salaries and benefits to, to cover this increase. And certainly we can handle the budgeting it without any tax increase for next year. Okay. And you also may mention about some position that's not being filled that you don't capture that money from. Are those positions ever going to be of uh, uh, field? We will, will eliminate those positions. We, we feel like we will have them filled at some point in time, but maybe not this budget year. Not this particular we'll budget budget. year. Correct. Okay. Yeah. All, All right. right. Thank you. Mark. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Same sign. Motion passed five zero. And uh, Jim, you've got the. Uh, Unanimous support of the board. We appreciate you. what do. you've done. We Very thank think you. it'll never be the same, but it will be better. And we look forward to you leading us there. So we will be right behind you and uh, look forward to it. Well, thank you for the vote of confidence and I look forward to working for each other. <coughs> All right, folks, let's move on to the next item. And that is. Go ahead, Jim. Yes, sir. The next item we had, we had a brief discussion a few minutes ago in reference to parcel number 04786. This is in reference to an access road uh, to a piece of property that's actually under contract and they would like to actually place an ice machine on the property. We had the potential buyer here today, Mr. Henry Rackley, that would like to, uh, to talk to okay. you. Okay. Please come forward, sir. <coughs> Mr. Rackley, would you like to speak to the board? I would. Okay. State your name, please. Sign in. My name is Henry Rackley. I'm from a little town called Bacon, Georgia, which is in South Georgia. Um, I'm in the ice business. I was uh, turned 72 today. I've been, my family was in the garment business for 49 years, and that's been away. So my brother and I got in the ice business. We've got 18 ice houses in South Georgia and South Alabama, and I, I bought two. One here at Camp's Barbecue and one at Mexico Beach. Mr. Earl Nichols uh, passed away about three months ago. Um, I'm looking for another location to put one in Port St. Joe, uh, closer to the marina. And I found a lot up here on the corner of 4th and 98, right there uh, between the uh, East Beach Smiley's and the highway. Um, it's got a, the city owns a 15 foot I guess the easement, they own a 15 foot strip there. Uh, the sidewalk takes up approximately 10 feet of that. So there's a five foot strip between the edge of the sidewalk and the street. There's a, there's a driveway there already. So I, number one, I was asking if I could have a, a right away, if I rent the lot or buy the lot to use that drive driveway that's already there. Uh, Number two, uh, I was asking if I could put an ice house there. Uh, it's on a commercial lot. Uh, 
there was an ice house right behind it at Smiley's. Uh, I believe Mr. Nichols told me that when he put the house down at Gant, uh, that he had to build a building around it. And that was, uh, I don't know, about 12 years ago, I think. Uh, in the meantime, they put one in behind Smiley's that didn't what required. So my question is, is, number one, if I could put the house there, and if, if they would put it there, to be able to use the five foot strip for my access off of 98. It's got an access on the alley behind it, uh, but I, it, it'd be kind of tough for folks to get in and out there. Uh, on the west side, it's got two light poles and a uh, uh, CD hydrant and then a water meter there. So you couldn't use the west side of the lock for entrance. The only place you could use would be 98 or either come in from the alley. Um, I got a few pictures of ice houses that I have if you guys wanted to see them to know what I was talking about. I, I didn't know, I mean, I think most of you guys know what an ice house is. But, um, anyway, that was that was my questions I had for the board today. Okay, all right, discussion? Anybody got any comments? So there's no, you're saying there's no access on 4th Street? Uh, I've got it. <coughs> I've got a, uh, this is what I got from my, uh, this is the lot here. Yeah, we've got that. Okay, yeah, pardon. And, well, there's a 15-foot strip there. I mean, a strip, but the sidewalk takes up 10 feet on it. So we're talking about between the front of the lot and the edge of the sidewalk would be five feet. The driveway is right there. And then, of course, over here, it's a 20-foot alley. That's, that's where the, you'd have access there and there. That's, that's the two. Oh, on this side is you can't come in at all there because of the uh, power poles and the guide wires and and the uh, water terminal and all. So you're talking about right off the 98? That's correct. And there's already a drive cut in there, and it goes through the sidewalk, and then it just turns into a gravel gravel drive. My my uh, uh, personal opinion. And, and well, actually, opinion and some others, Mr. Rackley, is that we we worked long and hard uh, for well over 10 years to make the tourist corridor along 98 uh, uh, acceptable, nice, aesthetic uh, place for folks when they ride through town to uh, stop, shop, so forth. And and I just don't think a, a nice machine right down that corner, right on 98, is an appropriate place for one. Uh, I know we've got one down uh, uh, Avenue D in 98, sitting back yeah, off the road. Yeah, yeah, sitting back off the road, but but uh, I I just uh, I just don't feel comfortable putting a nice machine right up there on Highway 98. So that's is that your opinion? Or that's just my opinion, sir. Okay. My, personal my, opinion. my question is this: though, is if if I don't put it there and somebody else comes before the board, are they going to be able to put one there? Well, it's whatever the board votes for. Okay, that's, I'm that's what it. that. I mean, it's a vote of the board, but I'm just, I'm just saying my my personal opinion is I'd rather not see an ice make a machine, uh, ice house sitting on, on the highway. Well, the question I got is, is it, that's right between two marinas. It needs to be something there for the people to come in to use the marinas and you know access to that. That's yeah. that's the only reason I want to put it there. Yeah, to be honest with you, Port St. Joe is. 3,400 people, and normally it won't support but one ice house. But situation that with the Port St. Joe, you got the ocean, so it would support sure. two. Sure. And uh, that's the reason I want to put it there, because if I don't, somebody else is. Well, somebody else may put one in town, I guess, but, right. but and it's up to the board if they. Okay. If they, what, well, I have a quick question. Uh, first, uh, happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank yeah. Uh, my question is. Are we considering the lease agreement, which is at zero dollars? Um, and the reason I ask you weren't here at the last 
meeting, but we discussed, uh, we had received a letter from uh, the owner's attorney asking for the city to donate the land, mm -hmm. and uh, that didn't, didn't happen because, you know, we not in having and donating land. So the question came up, well, what has the city done in the past when they've had a request like this? And so now instead of a, a donation, it's a, a lease agreement. Um, but we've entered into the discussion at that meeting about reaching out to our real estate person that represents the city and figuring out what the fair value of the land was worth. Um, I guess you could take the sale price of the property and divide it by the square footage of what the city owns. Uh, I think that would be fair because the value, I would argue, would be higher where the city's property is because it's right on the highway. Um, but I don't really believe we've done that at this point. Um, so my question would be, are we looking at the lease agreement or are we looking and talking about how a ice machine and an ATM machine would look on Highway 98. I think that's the main uh, main purpose of, of his. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't be interested in the that. property if I yeah. couldn't put. Okay, that, that's that's really put, yeah. what I so needed to know. The problem with that property is it's so small. You know, it's not it's 75 by 90. You know, you can't put the, uh, the, you know a restaurant there or anything. It's just not big enough. Right. It's limited. You know, I guess you use it for a car lot. Or, I think that's what it was at one time. Uh, I went back on Google Earth and looked all the way back to 1990. I didn't see anything on the lot, you know, for the last 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, and I'm my my feeling and my stance is going to be what I said when we received the letter about asking for the city to donate the land. Um, I don't really own the land, and neither does the gentleman mm -hmm. sitting up here. The people in the back of the room own it, you know, just obviously. And we couldn't give it away. I, I, I don't think we can. I'm not asking that was the owners. I'm right, but but you're asking us to enter into a lease that shows I, the I, value. I don't, well, just that's easy. Not, that's it's not, really what I was interested. The way I understand it, the lease is between you and the owners. That's correct. Yeah. The, our property is out of the question. They just want to make sure that we're not going to build a 10-foot wall block in their view if they put an ice machine. In. Okay. So I just want to be with the cars that use that entrance in at all. And you know, if, I don't really have a problem if I was to lease it. I, you know, I could pay something to the city for the use of the driveway. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with that because, I mean, you know, it's your land. But the main thing I need to find out is, you know, if you guys will let me put it there because I've been looking for a spot now since last year and it kind of stuff to find down here. We had another gentleman, it may have been the gentleman you referred to, come to the, to the city and ask if the city would lease him property down by mm -hmm. the fish cleaning table right. and we talked about how we would have to go out for bids and then if we did that and we entered into such a lease then we, the next person is going to want to lease a little corner for a hot dog stand that's and, right and, and, i understand and, uh, I, and, uh, I i mean i know you got a responsibility to the city so that uh, i'm just on her pass Yep. Have you had problems in other areas where people did not want an ice machine in a part of town? No, most of them, most of them wanted that because the citizens want it. Uh, Albany, Georgia, this, I've got six up there and they um, they passed the ordinance. Well, I don't know if they passed it because of me, but in order that you can't put an ice out in front of a, like a little strip mall, you can't put it in front, you got to put it to the side it or behind it. And that kind of killed a bunch of that because they got the downtown section of Albany. You can't you can't put one in there because yeah. uh, they want it to look like old town or whatever. Uh, that's really the only one that I've had a problem with. I, all the other towns, I just go in and get permit. You know, they they approve it. And I said. I think the reason why we're all concerned is is because of the visibility for 98. If it were back where it used to be, you have a hard time seeing it which is the same reason why it'll be good for you to be on 98 is because you have that visibility of boat traffic passing by. Uh, this is kind of a catch-22. We don't want to see it, but you need people to see it by the ice. Right, I understand. I, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, a good placement was the last one. Mm -hmm. that, that was, that got destroyed during the hurricane. Um, and it was used, uh, it was, a lot of times I went to it and it was out. I know, I talked to the gentleman that 
uh, the veterinarian right behind it, and he, <laughs> he told me right quick, like I'd be in court if I put one there. And I, 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 ain't, I ain't that. I don't want to go through that. I'm just an old country boy trying to live. To live. <laughs> So yeah, I, I would I would prefer actually if we're going to support an ice machine, I mean I would go back to the previous discussion about where where is the best place to have it. The best place is down there by the fish cleaning table. Maybe we should entertain the idea of looking into that and going out for bids and, and allowing you to bid on uh, well, I don't have a problem with that. If there's enough room down there, you know, for people for traffic. Uh, yeah, that's a big thing with the ice house is, you know, most time you got one customer, two, but then sometimes when it's real busy, you got, you know, trucks with a lawnmower or a boat, you know, and next thing you know, you got, you know, there's just not enough room there. And I, I don't know if it, I don't know if there'd be enough room there. I, I, I'm not familiar with that fish clean place. I What's yeah. the footprint of your? Ice house. It's eight. It's eight by twenty-four. Eight wow. foot, eight foot four inches wide and twenty-four long. I, uh, Commissioner Hoffman, I don't have a problem with looking at uh, in another alternative yeah. for him to put his ice machine. Right. I wouldn't have a problem with that. I think we there's a need for the ice. Uh, I, I've had people say when they saw us build the fish cleaning table, and it's just to the right of the boat landing. Yeah. Uh, I, well, I don't have a problem. You know, I, you know, I, I just want to put one. I, it's three hours from me down here, and I've got two ice houses. I, I'm trying to put one here and another one a little farther west. Uh, it's pretty tough to find a lot. Yeah, I just, I just can't support it there on the highway. I've had too many people. I understand. I, I just don't. The thing, that, the thing about it is, it's not. Um, it, it, to me, it's not the the, the sight of it being there. I think it's more about all the traffic that, that's going to be in that area when you, when you put an ice machine there, when you can put it up with boats and, and things like that right there off, off, off 98. If it was back a little further, um, I would support it, but the area that it's in right now, I don't think it'd be good for, for um, co all the commotion that it's going to cause in that, that, small, that small area. Because then you got people, I'm telling you, when, when, when it's time to go fishing and, and the Scholar right. Festival and all that. Put one here, I mean, that's, yeah, but I'm that's, talking about the, that what it's going to call the conjunction that's going to call in that area. Um, it, it's it's going to be um, crazy. It's going to be hectic, but a little bit further back, I, I would support it if it was off the highway. Gotcha. <clears throat> okay, so. Uh, we do have some discussion from the audience. Uh, please come up. Take your name, sign the book. I will state my name. And sign the book. And sign the book. I want to remind the uh, board, uh, we did the other, the, the ice house is down by the barbecue place, the Ants Barbecue, we required them to build a building around it for the aesthetic purposes of, because it was on the tourist corridor. If you don't require someone, Mr. Rackley or whomever, to do that, you're running, you're, you're facing the wrath of whoever was required to build that other one. So I would encourage you to keep that provision if it's on the tourist car of 98, it's got to be aesthetically pleasing, whatever's there. All right. Thanks, sir. Okay, so unless I hear a motion, it, it sounds like at the present time we will be uh, against having an ice house on 98 and that piece of property. All right. Sorry, Mr. Rackley, but uh, well, let me ask you this. He, he brought up a question. If I put a building around it, would that change anything? <clears throat> do do? I don't. I wasn't on the board at that time. I, I you know, I, I, I think it's just not a good place for it.
Okay, Doki, let's move on to a new business now. Yes, sir. The first item we have is a lighthouse lease agreement. Ms. Linda Woods here today to talk to you about it. <clears throat> I wrote this lease a few years ago. As long as you guys are happy with the 25-year term and, and the rent amount and you know the terms such as that, I think we're probably moved around or changed from what I wrote that, that. Legally, this lease is fine. Okay. All righty. Further discussion? Discussion moving forward. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passed 5-0. Thank you very much. We, we appreciate, we appreciate you guys. Uh, taking care of it for us. Yes, sir, Mayor. The next item we have is a reference to the rate study task order. Uh, what we have started looking at is <clears throat> your rates based on your ordinance uh, during the last year of them. So what we have before you today, we went out and asked for uh, a plan that would cover everything. The proposal in front of you would cover a uh, proposal to look at your water rates, your sewer rates, impact fees, and wholesale water rate. We've never looked at all this at one time. Uh, this is just a start point for you to look at. It is expensive. Uh, I think the total is around $42,000. Uh, we didn't have that much in the budget. We were kind of shocked at how much it was going to be, but we got it for you today to, to start the process to see exactly what the board would like to see in a rate study. Uh, I had a long talk to Jim this morning on, on the rate study. It's, it's not broken out as to what each task is going to cost us. Uh, but at the same time, I thought about, do we really need them? And uh, I think we can get along another year without even having one. I would, I, would, I would even consider not having one at all this year. We could continue with the uh, uh, increases that they proposed uh, the last time they did one, which I think is a 3% increase for across the board this year. Uh, I would even I would even consider a little less than that. I think we're, think we're in pretty good shape right now. I think another 12 months will really show us where we are. But uh, I would uh, I'm not sure I would uh, be want one this year. I mean, Mayor, I kind of get where you're coming from, but because of the storm, I think now's the opportune time to find out where we stand, and maybe it doesn't need to be a three percent increase because of the. the the increase or decrease in customers we have I kind of need to reset that baseline but I get what you're saying it's a lot of money uh, but we need to know where we stand you know, there's a lot of a lot of argument about our impact <coughs> being high um, I'd like to know whether they are or not you know I'd really like to have a definitive answer on that mm -hmm. and if we can work it out I'd love to see that Otherwise, I'm just gonna keep asking for productions get voted down okay yeah I, I agree with you Commissioner Ashbrook, I mean, the main thing I hear is the, our high impact fees, and and I hate to deter away uh, new business to the area, um, and that's that's just the number one thing I hear. Uh, but I just I'm not sure what everybody wants to do today, but um, I'm sure everybody hears that. It's eight or nine thousand dollars to hook up a new resident. Is that close to accurate? And and I think Jim on our discussion this this morning is was once you go over that 
two inch line on the commercial side, you start hitting the high fees, correct? Yes, sir. If you look at your impact fees, they're, they're not real high based on a individual house or a, uh, a mom and pop store. But if you start looking at industry and you start looking at a two inch and above, they do escalate, yes. And I, I do know one of the things that we wanted to determine was uh, what our wholesale water rate should be. Uh, and, and I was thinking and talking about it a little bit and realizing that through all this process, <coughs> increasing all the retail customers' rates, we never touched the wholesale rate. And I, I mean, the wholesale and retail rate, they both should incur increases because everything that goes along with it goes up. Cost cost. So, I mean, I, I understand that we've got, we just really got one wholesale customer now. We may end up getting more, but uh, but somehow we, we, we need to know what that is. Uh, but $43,000 is a lot of money. I, I'd like to see it broken out so we can, at least get it inside what our budget is. Mayor, Mike did have a conversation, I believe, this morning. He could show me a little additional information before the meeting. Maybe I'll just shed some light on some of that. Yeah, yes, I, I did discuss it with the consultants, and, and, and we've never done a full scope rate study that included the, the wholesale water rate or the, the impact fee review in the, in the same process. I asked him to, to revise the fees if, by removing uh, the impact fee summary and the, and the bulk wholesale rate uh, and some of their travel expenses for, for meetings, for final presentations um, and, and removing the impact fee summary uh, and, the, and the rates uh, get brought us down to 28.8. But what I'm hearing up here, we need the wholesale rate and we need the impact fee study. Right. So, sure. Yeah. Yeah. sure. Is there we, any can we eliminate everything else and what are you talking about? <laughs> well, the financial management plan is the bulk of the work yeah. and, and it's the driver that, that has been used the last five years for us to, to ensure we were meeting our debt obligation with our, with our, our region's loan uh, and, with the, and so forth. Um, so, so the financial management plan is, is I think, vitally important to the, to, to the long-term future and us projecting. Uh, I think there is some sense is that we do need to revise our baseline. I agree with that comment. I'm not in, in total objection to, to delaying it for a year. I certainly wouldn't want to do it for more than that. Um, but we did not budget 42000 We didn't anticipate this cost. What did we budget? Was we only budgeted, it, and it was a budgeting error on my part, it was only budgeted for fifteen k, which was uh, the, the review process. So the full rate study when we did it six years ago, uh, or five years ago, was 24, and then we did a subsequent periodic review, and that was 15. So, so we had a, a miss on, I missed on that in the budget, I only put 15 in the budget, um, you know, so, so that's a problem. And one thing we, we forget about is we approve this study. It puts a tremendous amount of work on our office staff to accumulate all this stuff. They don't just come in and do it all for us for 43. We supply them with, with all the data. And we're in the throes of trying to get our FEMA money, our insurance money. Mike's working on that, Jim, Charlotte, all the above. Uh, so I was thinking, gosh, if we can just put it off a year, maybe get caught up on all those things, then uh, we might be in better shape. But it's it's a big burden on these guys to put all that together. Yeah, it, it is, and I, I wouldn't object again to delaying it a year, but I certainly wouldn't want to go any further than that. I really think it's vitally important for us to continue to project forward and plan for, for our financial future, and especially with our debt obligations. and in us trying to be able to reduce that debt uh, when our current uh, loan uh, balloons in two years time, you know, we really need to be uh, prepared and thinking about our future. So, so uh, I that's support the study. Yeah. I think we need to study because we need to be able to articulate why we charge so much for water. We charge, a, uh, in my mind, a very high rate for our water. Yeah. Uh, and, and most people in the city don't understand why we charge that. Uh, you have to go through the process and look back in time when 
uh, I, in my opinion, a very bad decision was made by the people that set up here years ago when they approved, well, I believe it was a $20 million uh, new water plant for Windmark, and, uh, and we're having to pay for that, and, and that's just it. So uh, I support the idea of the study hoping that it will tell us we can reduce the rate. I don't know that that'll happen. Uh, but you can't defend something unless you have the data to prove, you know, you have a valid argument. So I think we need to have the study done. I do support the fact that it's not in the budget this year, putting it off till next year. We can budget for it. Maybe we'll have some FEMA funds come in to help with this. Uh, but I would like to hold where we are currently on the current rate and, and agree to not going up at all for the one year. And then we do the study the following year. I like your idea, Commissioner, and I think to go one step further, we'll, there'll be other funding sources. I don't know, Jim, have we ever asked an impact fees be used to pay for a study? <clears throat> no, sir. No. Can we ask? Impact fees traditionally can be used for one of two things, uh, expansion on your current system or debt service. And that's what you're the place for. But I, I agree, if we put too much burden on staff, I'd rather you all focus on getting the FEMA stuff buttoned up and insurance. Um, if, if we agree to do the full study, I'm fine waiting. Uh, we can ask for a governmental appropriation to cover the study for us next year. One thing we could possibly do too, it just depends on time and when you want to do it. Uh, you could possibly ask for uh, them to defer payment until October 1 for a portion of it because it's going to take months and months to do this type of study. This thing ain't going to happen overnight. You're talking months of work on there. So something you could consider on there is that that final balloon payment could be due and payable October 1 if you wanted to. So something to consider. I'm, I'm fine, Mr. Mayor, waiting and putting it off. Um, I just want to make sure we are mindful if we do have a big commercial business that wants to come in, I do not want to deter them away. Uh, oh, no, no. With a with a high impact fee, yeah. uh, that's my major concern. Yeah. I agree. So, uh, Mike, you said your budget is fifteen thousand this year for. Th that's correct. Commission. Yes. And and when you did that, what what would what did you have in mind? Um, well, it, in in the past, we had done just a preliminary review of of the rate study. This is a full rate study from top to bottom. Uh, so I just missed on, on that. That was just a, an error on my what, part. What does, what does that uh, preliminary review consist of? Well, uh, when we paid, when we did the, the preliminary review, it didn't require, like Rex said, the full year of data collection. Okay. Uh, and it, they didn't go back. Uh, you know, they were just looking at the current rates uh, and, and reviewing based on, on current data. It wasn't a full review. It was just a partial review that I budgeted for by mistake. You know. Um, is, is that how much work is that? Is, uh, if we did that review, would that um, give us any kind of um, understanding of what what um, what's going on with this total um, thing, or is it just yeah, it's just that's a, a that's a good point. Or it's just a um, something that they normally do without giving that data. No, the, the partial review, I'm not sure if we could go back to them and, and well, basically what we'd be saying is we just want to look at the financial management plan, plan and not look at the, the, the bulk water rate or the competitive the rates the or, the, <laughs> or the impact fee. I don't know, it's something I can present to them and we can discuss it and bring it back to the next meeting and have discussion. Yeah, let's, let's see if we can do that and then maybe we won't have to do that next year, you know. Just, just something I'm just throwing out there. I was just thinking about that. So. Yeah. Yeah, the key one that expires this year is currently is your five-year plan. Your impact fees were set up that they don't expire. They, they were not set up on a five-year plan. It was they gave a number on there. So those could be done today, tomorrow, next week, or next year. Your, in, your, your water and your sewer rates were based on a five-year interval. So you have an ordinance that's set up that said, okay, in 15, they were going to be this, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Let us go back and talk with them to see what our options are. I would suggest let's table it to the next meeting, and that way we can all talk and we can see if we can come back. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good idea thrown out. I more. think that's good. A couple more. Just real quick, are we tied to Stantec? Or are they single source? Why is this company always the one that does it? What you had was initially 
Um, Andy, Andy Burnham was the one that actually put this plan together. So I give a lot of credit to Andy helping with financial stability of the city of Port St. Joe. Back in 2010, he actually uh, worked with Burton and Associates. Now he's over with Stantec. So it's the same gentleman. He is actually with a different company. But this gentleman, he done tremendous work for the city that helped us in a, in a, in a very uh, good life for the financial stability of the city. So I would, I speak highly of Andy. Well, I think and I'm not saying we should, but how do we get around the bidding rules on should this go out for bid because of the threshold? Because you have them under, you have Stantec under a continuous service okay. contract. Yeah. Okay. And then my, my next question is, I was under the impression when I first got on this board that we were required by Regents Bank to do a study every five years. Is that not the case? I would I would argue that they're going to come back and want to see that again. Right now, you're not actually refinancing your loan or anything, but could they ask for that? Yes, sir, absolutely. And they, they have the right to look at your ordinance on there because that is what's placed for repayment on the loan. Okay. Yeah, the, the repayment and the debt obligation has specific requirements that we meet certain revenue thresholds, and that's how you calculate that with the rate study. So there is that language in the loans that require us to meet the certain revenue threshold. So if they asked for it this year, we wouldn't have it, but we could always say we're planning to work on it next year. That's correct. Okay. But there's no reason we can't go out and bid for a rate study. Sure. I mean, that's a lot of money. Yeah. You know, 26 to 40 something. I, I agree. And so I uh, think that's something we think about. I mean, but Andy, I mean, he's a sharp cookie, I'm telling you. It's something else. All right, that's been table. So here's a talking about impact fee. We got a reduction request, Jim. Yes, sir. If you turn to page 49, you have a new proposed subdivision that's coming uh, that you did the large scale plan amendment on for 84 units. They are asking for a 25% reduction on impact fees from the city. Yeah, I think we, uh, uh, that's happened before. Uh, I think going along with what uh, Commissioner Lowry talks about is uh, we don't want to stifle development because of our impact fees. But as I said in the last meeting, if we, I would like to see if we grant a fever waiver, uh, reduction, if if we grant it, it's only after the, the development is fully developed. Uh, and then we give them, once it's fully developed, they got a closing order, we give them the 25% of that back. Is that Yeah, that's, clear a, to you I think that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> so even if we talked to Pacey last week about it, it seemed like they didn't have a real problem with it. Uh, so, uh, I mean, fair for us, fair for them. So. Uh, entertain a motion for uh, for this uh, request. Motion to approve. Okay, motion by Commissioner Hoffman for a 25% waiver of impact fees for D3V Labs, which is an 84 unit development basically right across the street. Is there a second? No. <coughs> I, I was just going to say, Mayor, I, I don't go, know if I have to abstain because the, David's not the owner of the of the PUD, but I'm going to to be safe. It'll make it, the attorney's job a lot easier if I abstain. Yeah. <coughs> okay, was there a second? <coughs> Commissioner Langston? Okay. There's some uh, motion by Commissioner Hoffman, second by Commissioner Langston. Discussion. Any more discussion? Well, I think we need to make sure that we're clear on this motion will include when they receive the reduction. reduction. It's at yeah. the end. That way it precludes the developer from virtually selling the, the savings. Yeah. It's a rebate, not a reduction. Yeah. And I think I'd also yeah. like to include, so we're all on the same page, uh, when we approve the uh, reduction in fee to the SHIP program, we were clear to specify it's only the we were only waiving the impact fee and jim helped me here to we, we were real specific on what they were getting the reduction in it's not anything other than the impact fee it's not the other fee and all. right and the labor and all those things so that's i just want to make sure that we're clear okay. on that okay is that motion clear everyone okay discussion from the audience 
All in favor, aye. Aye. O, same sign, motion passed. Four O and one abstention. Uh, the next item we have is a record of surplus property. Uh, Bain and Pelham, our computer uh, tech, is just about finished installing all of our new computers. We have a stack of all the equipment that needs to be surplus to dispose of. Do you have to dispose of it, as in like throw it away, or can we donate after we approve the surplus? If you could find a church or you could find a non-for-profit that could use it, yes, we could. In the past, we've tried. We've tried to give it away to churches and the schools, but anymore, most of the people don't want to fool with it because we have to pull the hard drives out and there's a couple hundred dollars involved in it, and they can go buy another computer. So this would actually be, recommendation at this point would be to turn it over to a company like Green Circle that would actually dispose of them. Well, and I'm fine with that as long as we check. I know that uh, there's an after-school program, I forget what the building is called, but it's, uh, it's by the gym, uh, yeah. Peters Park and all. Uh, that, that some ladies do after school and they were asking for some use. Is that the program that's many likely? Yes. 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 All right. I'll tell so, you what, we can ask her and if, if that after school program would utilize them on the yesterday, that'd be great. Yeah, because okay. maybe we could mm -hmm. work with the school because I know someone that does IT for the school and, and she has told me that there's times that they have maybe hard drives or monitors Anyway, yeah. if you can if you can get one me tomorrow and put me in contact with those folks, I'll be happy. To okay, all right, thank you. So you need a motion to dispose of surplus property. Yes, sir. It has to be approved by the board. So yes. okay. Motion to dispose of surplus property is presented in your agenda packet. Second, Mr. Lowry. Discussion. All in favor, aye. 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 Those same sign. Motion passed. Five and up. All right. Uh, the next item we have is a reference to the parking ordinance. We have a letter from your PSJRA director uh, with some suggestions on the parking. And what I've also provided with you was uh, a previous parking ordinance we had a reference to overnight parking for you to start the discussion process. Discussion? I feel like we need to do something about it, Mayor. Uh, and we do. We need to try something. I think. I think that if it's a little impact to the beauty of Reed Avenue, if we can get away with the one sign per block with the arrows, say Reed Avenue, um, then you got to talk about the time. Is it a two-hour limit? Is it a three-hour limit? The alleys. I love his suggestion for the alleys. Just call it twenty-minute time. That'll stop people from parking their trucks in the alley and going and eating lunch. <coughs> All right. I, whatever we do, uh, I, I'd like to have a workshop before we vote on something. I want to make sure all the merchants uh, uh, are aware of something we might vote on that will affect them. Even though this should be positive, I, you know, you'll have some that won't particularly like it. But uh, but anyway, uh, we need to be very, very transparent on this and make sure everybody's aware of uh, what we're about to do. So, uh, well, <coughs> Something else I'd like to mention is always when dealing with an ordinance of this such, you always have the enforcement mechanism of what, what is going to be the penalty and how is that going to be enforced. And I know when I was the city attorney before, I was looking into this and I actually went and talked to the, the clerk of court and I talked to Judge McFarland and then I wasn't the city attorney anymore and I just, that was the end of that. And I haven't looked at it since. Um, I asked Jim whether Adam had taken that forward and apparently he hadn't. So. Yeah, kind of right where I, we were when I left off the last time. I, I think it may have been voted on before I returned uh, with a fining mechanism for golf course violations, yeah. but it never got obviously taken to the clerk to put it in motion, uh, make it official. So we would have to do the same thing with this. Right, and we do not want to follow the guidelines or utilize the state traffic citation for parking and the reason that we discussed it same with the golf cart issue we don't we don't write uh, uniform uh, vehicle citation for uh, golf carts if we do that it precludes our um, code <coughs> enforcement officer well actually both of them now Richie's law enforcement they can't be dual law enforcement and then get into city law enforcement 
so we don't want to do that. We want to utilize a standard fee based on uh, the ordinance. That has gone through the code enforcement mechanism? You mean no. you go in front of um, Mel as the special magistrate? I'm, I'm a little confused. Well, like with the golf cart, the, the penalty phase is first time it's like $50 and then it goes up and eventually you would lose the ability to have the permit for the golf cart. But the parking is a little different. When you penalize someone, don't doesn't that <coughs> have the right to they disagree with the citation to go to court? Yeah, and I, I believe the golf cart you could ask for a, a hearing before the special master. So okay, in that realm, not, yeah, not yeah, the, okay. right. It doesn't go into the civil or criminal court system. What happens, what happens if it's just a, a person who parks there? Doesn't have any real property. Doesn't own it. I, I just don't understand. And they're from somewhere else. I don't know how you really in the end enforce it. Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Yeah. I mean, the, how you enforce stuff in the code enforcement realm is the person owns, either someone owns that real property. And so you say you have to fix this particular violation of when, in this amount of time where you're going to be charged this amount of money per day. When they don't do it, then you can go ahead and get that order becomes a lien on the property. You eventually get more clothes on the property. You have a, there's some teeth there. I, I don't know how it works. Well, in the other meeting when it was discussed, um, the numbers that we were we were presented with was uh, I forget what city it was. It built it. Reached out to High yeah. Spring. They put the signs up. They wrote an ordinance, understanding that probably eighty percent of the people would follow just by putting the sign up and put the words out. Uh, they have never written a citation. Um, I don't know that we write any for the golf carts. Um, so I think you have to move forward just hoping that you have compliance and understanding that you really don't have a lot of uh, teeth in the, in the ordinance if it gets pushed back on you. Uh, is, anything is going to be better than what we currently have. Currently we have people that work at a restaurant park there for eight hours. Uh, if we can get some cooperation with that, be better than what we all that's my feeling where do we want to do a workshop yeah we, we need to uh, we need to uh, have right, folks right. notified that we're talking about uh, two hour parking on read between certain hours I don't know what that would be but that would be the purpose of a workshop try to get some input from the uh, retail merchants on read who it will affect and uh, see if we can come up to something. So it's been a long time we've been talking about it. And one thing I, I brought up to Bill at the DRA meeting, and you all were here and I met with him afterwards, is uh, Dr. Joe parking lot on Williams Avenue. It, in the past it hasn't really been used, but it's starting to be used. Mm -hmm. um, so, and there's some overnight stuff there. Right. And, and I'd like that to be a part of that workshop as well. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I mean, uh, business, uh, having a vehicle parked on, in front of their business, uh, it's, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a tough. We've got three or four in town I know of right now. Uh, where, where will they put their equipment, I guess you would say. Uh, that's something we need, need to talk about. If we set a date in the, not so near future, maybe April the 14th, that would give the Chamber of Commerce and Jim ample time to let people know what's going April on. April 14th, that's the second, second Tuesday, Tuesday in April. It's fine with me. What time? Oh, uh, yeah, what time of day? Last time was 6 o'clock or 5. We had that? a chance to get off 6 o'clock. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. 6 o'clock on April 14th. We'll, we'll have a workshop. In the meantime, we need to make sure it gets on our website and Facebook page and all the above. Let folks know we're going to be talking about it. Okay, let's move on. The last item I have, Mayor, is a reference to Resolution 2020-01, Rural Area of Opportunity Designation. Uh, this has been a tremendous benefit to the city in, in searching for grants. So. Staff recommendation that we approve resolution 2020 All 
anybody? A motion for that. It sure helped us during the storm. I know that. I'll make the motion, Mayor. Okay. I'll second. Okay. Motion and second to uh, approve resolution 2021. It's <coughs> rural area of opportunity designation. So, motion and second. Discussion. Any from the audience? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, oh, same sign. Motion passed 5 0. Oh. All right. We're down to. Jim, you got anything else? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, public works. Hey, Mayor, uh, in the agenda today is, uh, uh, I believe, a, a cost for uh, an electric pump. This pump is actually for the Clifford Sims lift station. You may or may not be aware that it station has suffered a failure. Uh, we currently have a diesel pump on that right now. And we've looked at different options that we may have to, to convert that back to from a temporary perspective, but basically back to electric. Um, unfortunately, the temporary fix, which would be just that, was just within a few thousand dollars of, of what you have in front of you, which is an electric pump, much like you see on First Street or, or 20th, uh, which we could place and, and give ourselves some time to figure out what we're gonna do with that, just like First and 20th. Uh, we have to do something. Uh, we do have some options right there given the, you know, the station location uh, with the Cape Sewer Force main. So I think there's an opportunity to change a few things. Clay and I have talked about that before. Um, but today, I guess it's for the board's option if we would like to purchase that pump on state contract uh, so we can remove that diesel pump from the neighborhood. Do we, uh, first street is engineered, ready to go? It's not engineered yet. 20th Street, not engineered yet. Now we got to do Clifford Sims. We Correct. need to get all these lift stations. We, we need we need some task orders, I think, first and foremost, yeah, from Mr. Smallwood. I, Small I Wood, really yeah. think we need to consider giving our engineer tasks to, to find out what it's going to cost us to get those back in shape. Instead of putting Band-Aids on everything, let's, let's try to get them fixed right. So, so uh, uh, that's going to be outside this right. request, uh, but I want to continue the discussion after we decide on this. Is it in the budget? We have we have the funds in the budget. Yes. Okay. All right. So move, Mr. Mayor. Okay. That's it. Motion and a second to uh, buy electric pump for the Clifford Sims lift station, which is uh, definitely needed. <coughs> Any further discussion? Discussion from the audience. All in favor, aye. 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 Same sign, motion pass five and other. Now, it's not time for Clay yet, so we'll wait until Clay comes up and pile it on. Okay. That's all I had, Mayor, unless there's right. questions of the board for me. Anybody got anything for John? I've seen where the uh, disc golf is being utilized at the lake. I've seen six people playing. All right. I have not seen any parking issues whatsoever. So I just want to say thank you for that. That looked good when you okay. put the uh, what they call nets or holes. Well, I actually, uh, baskets. yeah, um, uh, Reese, Reese, Antley, Reese they saw those. Oh, okay. Yeah. Reese did that, yeah. Yeah, well, I, it's surprising. I've seen people the last three days walking around throwing on the discs. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. It's encouraging. I didn't see them up to tell you the truth. Yeah. Oh, uh, you can't really notice them there. They're really subdued so in the landscape. All right, Mr. Larry, what you got surface water plan? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, unless the board has questions, I really don't have anything new at this time. I'll answer any questions you have. But. Everything smooth? Yes, sir. You got a full staff? No, sir. We're still uh, we're uh, trying to hire electricians still. Okay. Another electrician. Yeah, we hired Richard. Uh, yeah, so that's for the waste Oh, that's okay. Okay. All right. We got one we loan to Kevin if we need it. <laughs> okay, no, uh, Kevin, what you got? Um, everything's pretty much the same as the last meeting we have. We're still pushing water out. You know, same stuff. Uh, we did get the vehicles in, the Nissans. I hope we get the rest of the paperwork in so we can legally put them on the road or in storage. Right now. Okay. We, get, we got possession of them just waiting on, you know, the paperwork so we can make them all legal. Mm -hmm. um, that's pretty much where we are. 
still working on the lab and you know, all that kind of stuff. So what about your that. staff? Uh, we're full. Okay. So if, if Larry will leave my electrician alone, then you know we'll be okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Mike. Um, I've got the summary together by uh, location for our funds available to, to put back into our facilities from insurance and from FEMA. Uh, Jim and I haven't had an opportunity to review it closely yet, so I'd like to do that, and then I'll push that out to you so we can all start thinking about not only the lift stations, but all of our other facilities that, that we need to start planning for. Good deal. All right. Let's put that together. All right, Mr. Clay, come on up. <clears throat> Yes, sir. Let's start with this station. Yeah, let's do that. Them. Let's do that, gentlemen. We got to we got to pass them with with engineering those lift stations. We 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 got a little money from the state. That, believe it or not, is in our possession and not theirs. And uh, we can uh, we can pay for a few things. So, and, and I think with the first street and maybe the 20th street, we got task orders together. Maybe it's been a while back. I, I have to remember, but uh, the, we can put one in where we can put this in as well, and maybe bring all those back to your some of them. Yeah, if you <laughs> do that, that'd be great. We can start moving forward to getting things put back together the right way, and hopefully the uh, legislative appropriations will come through. This that's going to help us, uh, especially with First Street. Yeah, that's the main thing. I want to make sure we're ready. Yeah, uh, absolutely. When we do get get the okay on the mic. Yep. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, okay the, uh, just going down the list, the trail lighting, uh, Duke reached out and they need uh, an easement for the St. Joe Company on a small piece of that where the lights are going. So they're, they're working on that. They, uh, fortunately, they do that from time to time. So they, I, I expect that will be a solution, but nothing else. That's where that is. Yeah, that thing's been going on and on so long. Langston sidewalk, I think, and we, we yeah. certainly need to maybe close it out. Yeah, I think everybody's aware that we got a $25,000 match, and uh, we don't even have any lights up yet. So so we need to, I think we need to see some something as soon as we can, Clay. Yes, sir. I, I think in terms of lighting, I don't think there's any city to do that. I'm aware of things. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I know, that, but we just need to ride herd on somebody to let's get it done. Uh, I don't have a date for you on the pavement. Like I said last time, they told me they'd be down here in the next several weeks and catch it while they're here. I know they're in the area. I don't, they haven't given me a date even as of today. I asked for it pretty regular, but I will continue pushing it. Please. Yes. And then uh, several things on Scott Grants. Um, you know, y'all. You qualify to apply for municipal stock grant pretty much every year and over the last several years since the state opened that program up. And you've been pretty successful. You did one phase of garrison. We're finishing the design on that second phase of garrison. Um, first street that's funded for next year. You applied for that one, I think, last year, year before it got funded. It's on the list of, uh, to be done. So it's time. March 20th is actually when they're due. So you got about a month. But you have another application to put in. And so, uh, you know, a couple of ideas, I'll just throw them at you and you know, go with them where you want. But um, I would look at, you know, probably Madison is a, is a good uh, front of high school. It's probably a good candidate. The asphalt's in pretty bad shape. It meets all the requirements of that grant application. Avenue A would be one probably from uh, Commissioner Quinn on the road bond did from railroad track back out to 71. I might look at railroad track back to 98. That's probably a good candidate. Um, you know, Long Avenue's in bad shape. I mean, we all know around there so you may or may not want to get into getting back in a lot into it plan for the utilities but um, not something you necessarily have to decide today you can still have time that you're if you decide something first week of March so it's, it's, it's Avenue B is Jim you and I were talking about something beside A that was such bad shape what? C and D are in pretty bad shape C and D, okay. <clears throat> but you got utilities underneath yeah. we have the CDBG that's in process that's going to address some of those utilities over there so I would suggest that once you get done with that CDBG, you may have some sections that would be candidates for payment at that point. But like a lot of our streets, unfortunately, John's got utilities underneath them that, that, is, that are subject to fail at any time. Yeah, I mean, they're like uh, Woodward Avenue from 10th to 16th Street is probably one of our worst in, in town, even though it's got a lot of utilities under it too. I think though at some point in time, we're just gonna have to dig down 
patch up those areas compactly good and go ahead and pay. We, I don't think we'll maybe in our lifetime ever get all the infrastructure fixed that we need to fix so we can pay the roads. We just, some point in time, we just got to pay for some of these roads. They're terrible somehow. So, yeah, we got quite a few that we, we can bring to you. Sure. That. sure. Clay, what's the upper limit we can ask for in Scott Grant? Can we do several projects? I, I've seen, uh, there's a town in South Florida that has been successful with that doing very short roads and five or six of them. Uh, I haven't seen it as much in the pan. I think Quincy or Quincy or Chattahoochee did a couple years ago. They got funded that way. Um, so it's not impossible, you know, certainly. I, I think you're probably looking at somewhere um, no more than about a half a mile or so, probably total six tenths of a mile maybe. Anything larger than that, that's for this program is a pretty large project. Only because there's only <coughs> a million in, in the pot and there's 92 cities that qualify for it, 30 counties or something like that. But there's a lot of competition for nine million. So if you go in and ask them for right. much more than three or four hundred thousand, it's kind of got a challenge. We got a lot of short run roads that we we don't take care of. What's tricky too is they give additional points for connector roads to state highways. Uh, they look at what what goes in front of the road, a school, school, nursing home, those kind of things. So we've been successful because we were looking at those big connector roads. So you're really limited. Madison what said is what's going to really get you the highest yeah. number of points to qualify. So, yeah. okay. can, we, can we say we're going um, going to do this road but do another? <laughs> Good try. <laughs> Good. Good try. <laughs> That's outside of the box. <laughs> um, I got one question. Um, yes, sir. When do you think they'll start working um, again on first year? It's supposed to be, is it going to be this year? Oh, the, the money is available at DOT's uh, fiscal year uh, 2021 budget. So that starts June 1st of okay. this year. Okay. So they'll roll into their new budget. So they typically put those grant agreements out. Um, like November or so of this year. So it'll, it'll probably be about this time next year before you would see pay for something like that for sure. Well, it's yeah, definitely needs it. First year, definitely needs um, Yeah, in front of the high school, there are numerous potholes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I seen the patch truck out there the other day. The county's patch truck, I believe it was. Um, just a thought. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else for Clay? Got plenty, plenty to do now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. From us, for sure. We just need to make a decision about what you say. Next week. Let's do it the next week. The first week. Okay. That'll give us two weeks without getting that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Code enforcement, Jim. You got a report on that? Are we two more going to a special master. Yes, about? sir. We had our. Um, Special Magistrate has reviewed two cases, gave us a recommendation. Those are in process now. And <clears throat> Mr. Burkett has advertised two more that will be heard uh, in the next 30 days. Yes, so we're moving through that process. Okay, all right. Police Department, I see CP back there. Are you gonna report or are you gonna let Jim do it, CP? Oh, Jim. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor, what you got is we did get some good news. Uh, your police chief, Mr. Heron, has been working through looking at a grant. He found some additional money for two more vehicles that would give two new additional vehicles to the police department. Uh, it's about a $70,000 grant. With that, we would have to outfit the cars on there a tune of about $15,000, but this would just about complete your fleet as to all new vehicles. He just wanted to make sure you were aware of the grant and that yes, we will have to come up with $15,000. It's not in the budget, but we didn't know we would get a $70,000 grant in St. Louis. Is the money in the police budget overall? I know he's lacking, who was lacking officers for part of the time. Is it all gonna, the bottom line, not gonna change if we do this? I, I haven't reviewed that, but, but I'll certainly look into it. Well, we need, I, I think we yeah, need to move forward, forward a grant. Yeah, get get two vehicles for $15,000. Um, I asked him if we could get four, but we couldn't. So. Yeah, that's good. We just, he just wanted to make sure FYI you realize that we might spend fifteen thousand dollars for the outfit them on there, but you got the grant that came. I'm good at staff. So, so if there's a motion to approve uh, going out for the JAG grant, and we'll move, and then we'll figure out the rest later on. There's a motion. Second. No second. Mr. Langston. 
Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 The same sign. Motion passed five and zero. All right, Miss Pierce, do you have anything? I don't have anything, sir. Unless there's some questions, I'll move to the board. Uh, anybody? Question, Miss Pierce. Okay. Thank you. Citizens to be heard. Anyone in the audience from this wood? <clears throat> that I did not think to mention this before. As part of the uh, new lease that we have, we will of course be taking over the utilities for the Eglin building. We've always paid the utilities at the gift shop building in the town. Um, there have been some special arrangements made with power at the Eglin building. I'll work with Jim about getting that transferred over to us. But for the future, when people come into the park and want power, there will have to be arrangements made because we cannot support a power bill <laughs> for festivals or concerts or um, things like that. So I just wanted everybody to be aware of that so there would be no surprises if um, someone comes to you and says they won't give me power. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That, that'll happen. Thank you. Yeah. So is all that tied together? I mean, I think it's going to be separated. Uh, some of the area, you have a whole other panel that's over by the pump station thing over there. But now, if somebody wanted to come in and tie it to the the building the itself building. on there, that would be separate. Well, there is actually a I I don't know what you call it, but at the back of the building, mm -hmm. there was power put there to run bouncy houses and things. Uh, or when they light the and when they light the tower yeah, that I, runs I off heard of that, that was pretty costly. Yes. So. Okay. Anyone else? Please come up. especially after the last time I was here. When you hire um, outside, uh, let's say, services or uh, contract with people, do you ask them to um, sign disclosure forms that show you know, who they are in business with and uh, you know, maybe some things that might be a conflict of interest like we had with our I don't think so. Uh, help me with that, Jim. Uh, outside uh, uh, employment contracts, uh, do we require no vendors and those sir. If you're looking at specific contracts on there, you know, with the attorney and myself, yes. But if you start looking at somebody that's building a building or those type of things, not always, no, sir. I don't think there's a specific policy on it. Right. Could depends you, on the contract they come before. Can you research, if you wouldn't mind, what, what some of the other municipalities in the area do? And uh, let's uh, see if it's something we want to add to something going forward. I, I think it would help um, from a good standing standpoint for the taxpayers. Uh, again, if our taxpayer dollars are going into somebody's pocket, regardless of uh, what they, their service might be, we should be able to understand if they have other connections in the city or the county that might lead to, you know, how they got the job. Got okay. um, So, and the, this leads me to um, our current uh, BCC solutions um, because I did do some research and that gentleman does have some connections here uh, in the county uh, with another business. It's, uh, it's, let's see, Gulf Container, Gulf Container Solutions. So again, it, it's, it's a little, I guess unsettling. But I would like to know for his debris pickup. He just picked up from my home last Wednesday. And is is it correct to understand he is supposed to pick up from each home every four weeks? Or 
when you say once a month, I mean, someone could go seven weeks into the following month and not pick up. However, I'm expected to pay monthly Gotcha. Four. Mm -hmm. So I just I, I assume he's supposed to hit everybody. Uh, I don't know how he <coughs> can pull that off, but he's supposed to do it once a month. Okay. Yeah, everybody. Right. So, for okay. example, I got pick up on the twelfth for okay. my debris, right. and it was out there for I think pretty close to six weeks. Yeah. We just need to manage that um, because now I'm doing more trimming and I've got more debris, and I would like that gone on the 12th of this next month. Well, I, th and I, think I think that's, that's reasonable. <clears throat> the main problem we've had so far, and I think he's aware of it, and Jim's been forwarding that over to him. If you were like, I know we would try to, we would like some clarity ourselves, Mayor, as to specifically which wind areas are cleared and when they're gonna be going through. So if you like, I can send a memorandum over to Please you. Yeah. Yeah. See if I can get some clarity. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. I greatly yeah. appreciate that. And then the last thing is when, um, the, for example, garbage pickup, I'll go to that. Do they have to supply VIN numbers for their vehicles to the city? I don't think so. They, they really kind of should. I mean, you know, it, you should know what equipment, you know, what their VIN numbers are, or what, who, who owns the equipment, et cetera. I mean, it's just, again, total transparency when you've got then big if, Then if we get uh, Roberts and Roberts in here paving the roads, we're gonna have to ask them to do the same thing. Yeah. That's kind uh, of tough, I, tough, I, tough enough to crack Yeah, but I, my yeah. thing right now, Mr. Mayor, with all the things that are going on in the panhandle, it's, it's better safe than sorry in the fact that we have had some conflict of interest things. I just think we need to uh, not fall prey to what has happened in other areas and other municipalities. Okay. Uh, because everyone might have good intentions, but then uh, if you don't set policies in place, then who really gets damaged are the innocent people right. and the taxpayers. Right. Um, just, let's see, I think the other thing that I did want to ask you is, so this rate study, and I know we'll discuss it at another meeting, it is very important. Um, that understanding how we're going to repay the debt that's still out there, um, and I'm wondering, because I just Googled real quick back there, is there opportunity for grants to help offset the cost for rate studies? We're hoping to get that. And, and so just looking at DEP, and I don't know if Northwest Florida Water <coughs> Management District has something, Nothing. but um, it, I think it is important, again, for the citizens to understand why their rates are what they are and that we want to be careful to pay our debt so that the city doesn't find themselves uh, in bad financial ramifications so all right Thank well so i'll much. i'll give these documents about um uh, bcc waste solutions okay. and all right everything. thank you ma'am Anybody else? Come right up, Mr. Joe. State your name and sign. <coughs> Hello, everybody. Joe Wigner, Chamber of Commerce. Wanted to just let you guys know our festival dates for this year. Um, <coughs> and invite everybody to the ribbon cutting. First things first are our dates. Uh, Blues on Reed will be March the 27th to 28th on Reed Avenue. Scout Festival will be uh, September the 4th and 6th. The Chamber will be involved with the Scout Festival again. We're coming, we're bringing that back on board. And uh, Portoberfest, City Commons, that will be on September the 26th. And just my festival, if you don't mind, the Forgotten Music Festival, we're gonna, I'm dumb enough to do that again. So I haven't <laughs> lost enough money yet. So that'll be, uh, we're gonna add a day. So it'll be 13th, 14th, 15th in November. And this afternoon, between 4 and 6, there'll be a ribbon cutting over at H&R Block. Everybody's invited. There'll be food. There'll be drink. And hopefully someone will be there and will want to say something, maybe. They, uh, are they at the uh, 
Pink and Wiggly Plaza, is that still where yes, they are? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Very We'd good. love to see all of you. Four and six. Ribbon cutting at four, though, I assume. Yes, sir. Refreshments yes, sir. thereafter. Absolutely. And okay. we will have a pair of scissors and some really nice new ribbon that will be unveiled. So uh, yeah. come right. and check out the new stuff. Good, we're doing. Uh, good deal. Any questions? Not at all, Judge. Thank, right. Thank you. You're busy. You're busy. Glad yes, to see you. Trying, trying to keep it busy. Yeah, happy. All right. Anyone else? Okay, discussion item. Y'all said I could be first last right. meeting. Remember yes, that? Yes, we did. I don't have anything to do. You use up your turn. Next, Commissioner Langston, we'll start with you. Okay, we um, met the, the, the community garden met at, um, at the garden Saturday. Uh, we staked out the... Um, where we want the boxes at. We um, staked out where we we're gonna put the corn. Uh, now we're just looking for, um, we I supposed to get with John tomorrow, cut some, get him to cut some wood and, and, and make the boxes. And hopefully uh, we'll be planning um, next month. Um, so um, I'd just like to thank those that came out to help. We had a, we had a great time. Um, it was a little bit of work, but we enjoyed it. And um, I'm excited about it. I think it's going to be a good thing for the for the community. And um, if we have any volunteers, just um, get in touch with me or um, Miss Beebe, and we'll be happy to accommodate you with some of this work. Um, that's about all. Okay. Next. Yes, Miss Claire, please come up. I yield the floor. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. She's connected with the uh, community garden. Yeah, I have access to, I gave some seeds um, this past fall. I work with the food bank in Atlanta, yes, or in Monroe, Georgia, where we are, outside of Atlanta. And I have access to, we had all the seeds that Walmart had, and they're in tubs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this big, at the end of the seed, they just took all them out. <clears throat> it's all kinds of seed. They are 2019, but I can get some and bring them down here for the planting. They're all, I mean, every kind of seed they sell. Yeah. It's tomatoes, corn, everything. If you're interested in it, yes, yes, I, am. That'd be wonderful. I can get a bunch of them. Okay. <laughs> and uh -huh. it's flowers, everything. I mean, they could, we've got wildflowers kind of sprinkling them anywhere. But okay. if you're interested in them, I'll, be, I'll bring them down the next couple of weeks. Yes, ma'am. Get them to you. Okay. Thank you. Great. I just have a couple of things, Mayor. Uh, first one for Jim. Where are we at on our appropriation requests? Have we heard? Has anything died in some committee, or is it all still going forward? I have not heard. Last I heard, <clears throat> they were still up for consideration. Do you have a list of the bill numbers that those all are? I I'm, gonna, I'm going to Tallahassee that. on Thursday, and I just kind of wanted to follow up, but I need to know what I'm asking for. I will send over an email to our representative and find out. Okay. And then another thing, when Clay was talking about projects that we have going on, you know, First Street being paved at some point, um, I think I discussed this at a prior meeting. It would be very helpful to the citizens and to the commission to be able to pull up the site showing upcoming projects. You know, if it's on our CIP and it's been funding's been applied for, let's just say funding has been applied for. If funding's been approved, let's put that. I would hesitate putting a completion date on there because it might hold you to it, but at least know that we've already applied for these things. I was gonna bring up First Street saying it was really in a bad in bad shape, and then I just found out today that it's been approved. So something, information passing along to the citizens of what, if they wanna know if the road in front of their house is being paved, check the sheet. No, I've got a list of all the grants that we have that's been in queue once it's been approved, and I tell what, I'll get that out to you. Sure. And you can take a look at it if you want to add information, take away information, let us know, and then we can get some. Then we just can have to have a link on the website that says upcoming projects. I'll get it out to you all for review. Okay, thank you. That's all I have, Mayor. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Lyon? The only thing I had uh, was uh, the HMGP uh, grant program, Jim. Yes, sir. Um, have we filed anything under that? I know it was due. There was a short time schedule on that. Um, you talking about the hazard mitigation yeah. grants on there? Actually, we've been trying to look into that as quick as we could. Um, there was a list that came down that actually works through the county. That's right. how that works. Uh, we've been trying to contact Marshall the last couple of days. I think he's out sick. But what we have, no, we have not filed any applications in there. But we have a list of everything that was done through Marshall's office there. 
we're trying to get clarification exactly that process on there for the city owner. The list included the items Langford, to my understanding, what happened was the county had actually hired Langford and associates to actually do the work for them. We, on that list, we had actually met the mayor, myself, Charlotte, we had met with them a few times, and <clears throat> a lot of items that we tried to address said would not qualify. The ones that they said would qualify that they thought would be candidates would be for the elevation of your lift stations. So Mr. Small was where was got those numbers and we've got that on the list. The only other thing they thought maybe would qualify would be if you wanted some generators for the Centennial Building or for like the Washington Gym. So the list was very limited because one of the things we thought was, <laughs> what about a new complex? They felt that it probably wouldn't qualify unless you actually tied it into an EOC building. So there's not a lot of items. It's got to be mitigation, raising a bridge, uh, raising an, uh, uh, a lift station, those type of things. So Ms. Pierce was actually working today trying to get some clarification on there exactly how we get that application process. Put would, in would you have to uh, just have a separate EOC building or could you have an EOC room inside the city complex, the new city complex? The city chambers could be the EOC building. Emergencies. That's that's correct. Yeah. So I, I just really don't understand why we wouldn't qualify for some money to help us build yeah. a complex. The mayor was scared I mean, to flooded. What yeah. can you say? They made it pretty clear at that workshop that they're the last resort. The DEO CDBGDR funding needs to be the last ask. And they said that if you are eligible for the hazard mint, that you wouldn't qualify for the other. Yeah. That's my only fear is that we have a project that we're going to try to get the CDBG grant money for, and they say you should have went for hazard mint, and that's closed soon or if two weeks right. I'm mean, two weeks I think so I think we should go I think we should ask I mean about the city complex they might say but we need to maybe have it writing like Mr. Ashbrook says that that we were turned down at least we tried yeah exactly or in the event our city complex we've got an EOC type facility built inside of it mm -hmm. or something like that yeah yeah <clears throat> I would argue that it would at least be housed for staff that could go out and be imminent to help with public safety right after the event. Sure. Because you know, last time we had everybody at the water plant, we need a safe, secure spot that as soon as the storm is passed that we can get out to help our students. We didn't have any place to go to meet. We just met in the parking lot behind the building after the yeah. storm. <clears throat> I mean, we're that property is high and dry. Yes, I mean, it is. Uh, we'll work on, like I said, Mr. Pierce is going to call into them trying to find out exactly what this process is. I would send it in even if they said it probably won't qualify. Just I, to be safe. Just do it. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Brad. I'm sorry. That's all I have. Okay. I have nothing official. I would like to remind everyone that we have uh, the girls basketball plays tonight right there. Yes, sir. And the boys play Thursday. Thursday night, if both teams win, they have the possibility of both teams advancing to the state. It'll be the first time ever in the history of and it's high here, school. Uh, Commissioner Langston, ball game is here what time? Uh, 7 o'clock tonight for mm -hmm. the girls. Okay. 7 o'clock Thursday night for the boys. All right. Good. Good deal. Good deal. And I'll circle back to me. I want to thank the, uh, I believe it's Sarah Darden at the Garden Club. Uh, They've uh, taken care of our planters in front of City Hall. We told them we'd take care of keeping them watered, but they have replanted those, and I want to give them a shout out that we appreciate it very much. That being said, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. We've gone.